useless, unsafe, and dirty. Oh. Those are just a Sounds few of the like words God. a new report is using to <laughs> describe. I mean, I was waiting. It was just a matter of time. Okay, folks. It was the third time you said I was waiting. Who was going to say it was Dan, Sorry. BK, Tim? Tim. Sorry. Those are words used to describe Bitcoin. Okay, let's get back on topic. Let's get to Seema Modi back at headquarters for the details. Seema. Melissa, it's the Bank of Central Bankers slamming Bitcoin in a 24-page report questioning the validity of cryptocurrencies and the decentralized technology it operates on, asserting that cryptocurrencies are highly volatile especially when you compare it to the price of gold. BIS says it's because cryptocurrencies lack a central body which is dedicated to keeping the currency stable. Plus, they say transactions are costly. Bank of International Settlements head of research pointing out that Bitcoin fees peaked at $57 last December, underscoring why using Bitcoin over the U.S. dollar as a means of payment is neither cost effective nor logical. The bank also raising concerns over the vast amount of energy required to mine cryptocurrencies, which it claims could overwhelm the system and, quote, bring the Internet to a halt. The cryptocurrency community this morning fighting back. Monica Quaintance of Kadena, a blockchain platform, says the industry is still in its infancy. Therefore, it's too early to analyze and make these grandiose projections. Melissa, the Bank of International Settlements may not see true value in cryptocurrencies, but the believers in the technology and its applications are sticking by it for now. All right. Seema, thank you. Seema Modi at headquarters. So, what do you, I know you think that this is full of... Well, listen, useless no, information, no but. I understand. I mean, the, the report, I read it about three times this morning, and it's there are so many inconsistencies in, in it. They say, listen, you know, money's about trust and trust can fall apart. But by the way, trust us, we're the BIS. So here's the real here's what's going on is that Bitcoin itself is an existential threat to the central bankers. That's what this was designed. It was designed as an alternative financial system. With Bitcoin, you don't necessarily need a central banker. If you want one, go have, go have a ball. But in the Bitcoin cryptocurrency ecosystem, you don't need those central bankers. Not only that, you know, Bitcoin is an alternative here. So it's the new guard versus the old guard out there, right? So this is kind of like when the newspapers went online, all the newspaper editors said, ah, oh, that's never going to work. New guard, old guard. And then finally, the difference here is what the, what the whole thing about Bitcoin is peer-to-peer. -peer. It removes the middleman. And the middleman in this particular case is the BIS and the central bank. So Bitcoin is like the Napster of money. And that's what they don't like about it. I get what you're saying here, but one of the points is that you need to have users, and this needs to solve a problem. So what? So sure. are we? When are we going to get to that point where we have users, and that this is this we is have. not just a token so, that's traded? Right. Of course. So think about it. I think probably the markets and price had gotten way ahead of where the technology is. Remember in 1981, the San Francisco Examiner went online, took two and a half hours to download, download their newspaper. And people said, oh, this can never work to download pictures. It takes too long. That's where we are in Bitcoin. So you got to take, take a step back and put it in perspective. New technology, as this technology grows, you will get more users. Hey, Beek, so this is central bankers, a group of them. All right, all right, isn't there a lot of talk about sovereign cryptocurrencies? And aren't these the same central bankers who may be very interested in this to solve some problems? Give us some, some color on that. Yeah, I'm not sure what problem a sovereign cryptocurrency solves. Right. The whole point of a the ability to, to to actually know where money's flowing in and out of your country. I mean, well, this is the big issue. And I, right. I'm, I'm on your side on this one. But I will say that there's a fundamental issue here is that governments can't not know what money's flowing in and out of their country. I and totally I, agree. And I think that's, that's why they don't like it. That's that's the and problem. That's, that's good. That can't, is the can't existential be threat. I don't well, know. I don't know if it can't be overcome. I mean, it's being overcome in countries like Venezuela, like Zimbabwe, like Argentina. Well, you can't trust the government. Well, you can't so you trust want the government. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, Square, by the way, I mean, as much as we're talking about cryptocurrency, Square seeing a big boost today after the company announced that it has gotten a license that will let New York residents, New York State residents, buy and sell Bitcoin through its cash app. Look at that pop, 2.7%. So here's the ultimate game of would you rather in the oh, like cryptocurrency this. space. Bitcoin or Square? Bitcoin or Square? I'll go with you first because you've been an investor. Yeah, I own both. I'm, I'm in Square right now. De definitely Square because I fundamentally believe in the company. I believe that this is really a small business story. It's a software story. There's even a credit story there. Um, and I like the fact that they are very well positioned in this space. So, yes, Square. 
See, it's, it's interesting. I, I would say Bitcoin because I think, listen, really? you're down. We, I think we all understand what the downside is. The upside to me is ridiculous. I mean, the upside could be anywhere from an eight to a 10 bagger. I don't think you can say the same about Square. I will say about Square, people say it's expensive on valuation, but you're talking about a company that's going to grow earnings by can, 70%. So I love the Square story. Can I, can it's I not an indictment question? on Square. Can I ask a question? Ask a question? question? Sorry. Yes, yes, Your Melissa. prediction of potentially of Bitcoin being eight to ten bagger, though, is that is that based on the climb that we saw in the fourth quarter of last year? Because we're also saying that maybe it went too far too fast and maybe mm -hmm. was way overvalued to the upside at that point. Eight to ten so, times is okay. Is quickly, because BK is far. Listen, BK is the crypto baller. I see people painting graffiti. BK now in the <laughs> I city. I saw that I, on the tweet, garbage I put it on the Twitter. I saw that. With that said, if you, you can't back out what happened in December, but if that never happened and Bitcoin went from four hundred dollars or less when BK started talking about uh -huh. it to where it is now, we'd be saying, "Oh my God, look at the move that Bitcoins had." We're just sort of um, not confused, but I think that whole move up to nineteen thousand has us all sort of screwed up. Last word. Yeah, last word. You're buying both. Two ways to play the same theme. Square brings people on. Bitcoin is the underlying uh, payment system. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.